Hi, and welcome to the Aspiring Actor's Guide to New York, working title. It's the Aspiring Actor's Guide to New York, yeah! In this show, we drink wine, my dogs make guest appearances sometimes, and we talk about how to pursue a career in musical theater in New York City. In today's episode, we're talking about how to build your audition book. Every actor gets sick of carrying around this folder forever. If you're going to be a, uh, an actor pursuing a career in musical theater, you are going to be auditioning all the time, and it will not, not behoove you to just be carrying around Hal Leonard's Guide to Musical Theater to br br put in front of your, of your accompanist. You're not going to come across professional. So, instead, every actor builds their audition book. This is mine. We're going to go over the physical aspects of your audition book, and then um, next week, I'm going to go over the type of songs you should put in your audition book. Let's get physical, physical. Buy a one to one and a half inch binder. If you go any bigger than that, you're gonna hate yourself. You're carrying around a lot already with your dance shoes and your, your dance clothes and uh, probably your clothes for work because you gotta work your survival job. So you wanna try to keep this smaller. I recommend uh, really investing in a nice one. Um, you'll have to replace it every year or two years because you use it so much, but don't cheap out on a like dollar ninety nine cent three ring binder because it's gonna come apart in the audition room and that you're gonna be mad about it. I have this nice like leather one. The rings uh, have never really given me any trouble. Go big or go home. That's what I always say. Sheet protectors. You can just put the paper in there, but the, the, the sheet music's gonna fall apart on you sooner and uh, it's much easier to, re to replace sheet protectors than it is to reprint all of your music, especially if you've accumulated your music over the course of several years and you didn't buy them all on music notes or whatever. Get the, the non-glare kind. You'll notice that there's still a little bit of glare on these. The accompanist isn't going to hate you because they're not going to be seeing their own reflection in, the, in your sheet music if you get the non-glare kind. I also recommend picking up some wet erase markers. Remember these? Remember when you were a kid and you were at, uh, at elementary school and the, and the teacher was drawn on the uh, transparencies with these guys. Uh, you can still buy these at Staples. They still carry them because transparencies apparently are still relevant. I don't think that's true, but somebody wants white erase markers and maybe it's just actors. You can also get them on Amazon. My reasoning for wanting wet erase markers as opposed to dry erase markers is because I mark all my cuts inside my binder with wet erase markers because I don't want them smudging off when I turn my pages. Um, which happens with dry erase markers and with wet erase markers. I can change my cuts at all times I just carry around this like a uh, lens cleaner and just like paper towel and you can make adjustments to your cuts by just spraying it right on there Like your teacher in elementary school boom and then draw in a new cut So say you're going to an audition We're asking for 32 in the breakdown online you get to the audition. They're like hey changed our minds We're gonna do 16 so we can get through more people so you make an adjustment to your cut. No big deal. You're online and they go, hey, we're gonna do eight bars now. You can make an adjustment to your cut real quick. You have some wet erase markers. Table of contents. Sometimes you're gonna be in an audition room and the director is gonna like what you did. And they're gonna go, hey, uh, what else you got? Your mind is gonna go completely blank. You won't remember your own name, let alone what else you can sing from your book. So having a table of contents, is very handy. I recommend making it in Excel or Google Sheets and then you can uh, adjust the way that it's organized. I have mine organized alphabetically by song, by composer, by year, by show. Different categories, obviously. So then, when the director asks, hey, what else you got? I can hand them this sheet of paper and be like, well, I can sing any of these, sir or madam. Any of these lovely songs I can perform for you right now, Johnny on the spot, let's do it. Here we go. And then sometimes they'll still be like, well, what do you want to sing? And then you just choose. But you can choose a lot easier if you got a good table of contents that you update every time you add a new song. Finally, tabs. You notice all these like little colored tabs on here? I've got all my songs in here in alphabetical order. So somebody says, uh, hey, Kyle, uh, what do you want to sing? And I'll be like, oh, I'm going to sing uh, River of Dreams by Billy Joel. Boom, River of Dreams. Here we go. Let's do it. Even though I know the river is wide, I walk down every evening and stand by the shore. I'm going to go over it in another video, but we're approaching an era where more and more accompanists are going to be a, a comfortable 
with iPads in the room. So you might be able to use your, an iPad for your book, but I'll cover it in another video. Write in the comments below. If you like this channel, subscribe. I'll be re releasing new episodes every Thursday at three o'clock. Tune in next week when we discuss how to build your audition book, what to put in your book, what songs do I want to put in there. Check out some of my other videos if you're interested. So thanks for coming out. Chase your dreams. I'll see you in the trenches. Ha-cha-cha. -cha.